Um, I'd met the president of Rolls Royce at a dinner. He let me borrow a Phantom. So ultimately, I bought a Phantom convertible. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and today I'm going to be reacting to a part of a little documentary on, what is this channel? I think it's called DW, yeah, DW, but it's basically about the upper upper class black people. So it's about elite black people. So um, I'm not going to react to the whole thing because it's like 42 minutes. I may do that in a live stream. I think that'll be good content, but anyway, let's get into it. In the United States, there are more and more African-American millionaires. Their number has doubled over the past 25 years. Today, one in 50 black families are millionaires, part of a new black upper class in the country. Did he say one in 50? I'm actually surprised by that number. Um, I thought it would be lower than that, but yeah, that's surprising. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you know, the whole high value man thing, um, which it wasn't started with Kevin Samuels, but he kind of, he popularized it. And um, I think it's eye opening to actually see what the difference is between really upper class black people versus kind of just going after entertainers, rappers and that type of thing. And I think it's interesting for men and women in particular to see what that lifestyle is since there's, there's so much going on around it. I thought it, you know, and even if you're not black, you can learn, you, you know, it could be interesting for you to see this. So here we go. Thousand dollars. I mean, we built the company to be a multi-million dollar business. Today, black people make up the second largest group of millionaires in the U.S. behind white Americans. But the country carries a long history of slavery, segregation, and discrimination. For the general public, the most well-known wealthy African Americans are athletes, politicians, and entertainers. You ain't African American queen. That's a fact. But far away from Los Angeles and its Hollywood stars, there's a different black elite, and it's on the rise. An upper class that makes up 3% of the African American population. This may not seem like much, but it's nearly one and a half million people. The city brings black excellence, period. So how is this new black bourgeoisie faring? What's the secret to their success? Some entrepreneurs are establishing businesses to support black communities. Black excellence isn't limited to athletics and popular music. It's also at home in the world of business and the professional elite. Don Peebles is a black entrepreneur who made his way to the top. As a, I just finished with Irving, um, but he has assured me that he'll have it finished this weekend. Peebles is a property developer and one of the richest African Americans in the United States. His estimated net worth is $700 million. He's a staunch believer in capitalism as the path to success. I see capitalism first. I see the, you know, the massive amount of development and the massive amount of people working and doing business. It reminds you of, you know, how America was built based upon capitalism. And then I see great opportunity. Originally from Washington, D.C. So I'm gonna pause it right there. Um, well, one, cause <laughs> I, fair use, I have to keep interrupting, sorry guys. But um, I wanted to, well, shout out to DC. He's from DC, me too. But I, did you see that apartment? Did you see like the views and things like that? And then he's worth 700 million. I bet the average black person has never heard of him. I've heard his name years ago, but I, you know, I lived in New York City, but I don't, I didn't know much about him. I didn't know how much he was worth. I didn't know anything. But I think to the average black person or average people, black or white, whenever we think of black people having money or upper class black people, we think just because they have money, that means that they are upper class. And it does not mean that. They even said this in, in the beginning of this documentary that it's not just rappers and athletes and entertainers that are the ones who are, you know, who are the richest. There is a quiet there is a, I guess, I don't want to say there, yeah, a quiet minority of black people who are actually living a lifestyle of luxury, but they aren't loud and flashy and in some type of, you know, um, like I said, you know, 
the entertainers that we normally think of. And I think it's important that black people in particular and black women see this, that when they call in or they're trying to look for this high value man, I don't, they, they're, they're looking at, uh, you know, little baby. They're not looking at Don Peoples. Okay. They're looking in a direction that is not, um, it's, 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 it's it's going after cash, but it's not going after class in terms of entering that. In, and when I class, I'm not saying little baby's not class. I don't know. But what I mean is like entering that class, stepping up from just, you know, this surface level wealth that so many people want where they're dripped down and Gucci down to the socks. Where this man, if you were to see him, most likely you wouldn't even know he had money unless you saw his home or his car. But his clothing, most people wouldn't be able to tell. So this is very important for black America to see this um, so we can have an understanding that, you know, we're all black, but there are classes just like with every other race in this country. He and the son of a civil servant and a real estate broker, he became a real estate agent at 22. He bought his first building soon after and was a millionaire by the time he turned 30. I grew up during a time of transition in America, during the civil rights movement in the United States. And so I got a very good sense that anything was possible. What I've accomplished in terms of business has been far greater than what my expectations were. Okay? All right, talk, talk to you later. Peebles has constructed buildings and even entire neighborhoods all over the country. He's been nicknamed the Black Donald Trump. He's part of the elite. His own apartment is a testament to his wealth. At more than 600 square meters, it's decorated with numerous works of art. It also features three bedrooms, a huge dressing room for his wife, and a 360-degree view of Manhattan. The apartment itself is valued at an estimated $35 million. Don Peebles has joined the ranks of America's most powerful entrepreneurs. How are you? But he keeps his priorities in check. No matter how busy his schedule, he still makes time for his weekly lunch date with his wife. Okay, so we're going to 138 Lafayette. They met when he was 27 years old, not long after he'd made his first million dollars. I was driving in Washington um, through an area and saw her jaywalking the street, and so I introduced myself, and the next day we, um, I invited her to New York, and uh, she came with me, and um, then the rest is history. Did you ever feel any scrutiny to marry a white woman? No, I mean, I'm married who I love. I, I mean, again, I'm multicultural and multiracial. So I think people should, you know, m date and marry who they love, regardless of race, gender, et cetera. A New York fairy tale and a relationship that's last. I just want to say right out the bat, just the way he is, just the way he presents, he's not, he's not a thug. He, didn't got, he doesn't have that swag. He doesn't have that, you know, he's not going to give you those tingles if you saw him. Even the way he speaks, the, the, you know, he's just, he most likely was a more nerdy or more, you know, not, not nerdy, more geeky. He, he didn't have that swag that so many women today say they want in a man. But this man's worth $700 million. And yes, and it, some people get mad, oh, you know, oh, he's married to a white woman. Please, y'all, just let it go. But what I'm saying is most sisters would not even be attracted to him in today's standards because they want a man who, like I said, they, he's got to have that little bit of thug. He's got to have that. He's got to make them feel a certain way. He's got to dress a certain way. Or this man's outfit, net worth, everything he has going on costs more than a dude that's Gucci down to the socks that has to, you know, show all, every, every drop of money that he's trying to pretend he has has to be worn. But see, are we as women giving men like this a chance before he becomes this $700 million man? Or what if he never did? But see, a lot of women, they will want him now, but if he was just a bus driver, they wouldn't be mad that he, you know, who's married to, they wouldn't even care about him. But because he has a lot of money, now is like, oh, well, why isn't he doing this, that, and the other? But we as women have to be honest, will we give a man like this a chance? And from what I'm seeing out there, this is not the prototype of the, the type of man that's getting picked across the board and not just with black women. I think across the board with all women, they want this, this, you know, um, 
a guy who looks a certain way. And a lot of the men who would be good husbands, good fathers, and so forth, they don't come in these particular packages, but they have the qualities that will last a lifetime. Lasted three decades. Today, they've chosen to meet in an upscale French restaurant. Katrina is a former model from America's white upper class. Though she's a businesswoman, she's completely devoted to her husband and their two children. 30 years ago, I met my husband and I explained his character and his demeanor to my mother. She said, if you marry a fisherman, don't be surprised if he goes fishing. And I've kept that with me all my life because he is a consummate business person. He's an entrepreneur. So there's no on and off button. An understanding. First of all, did you hear they, they just have a weekly lunch together? Okay. That's like their little date. And she recognized early on, she's got, she's from some upper class, um, family they were saying, but she understood that his business really comes first. He, he is going to always be a businessman and she has to fit into what he's doing. But w even though she's a businesswoman, she is still his, her, him and the children come first. He is the priority in her life, no matter what she has going on. But what we hear today, a lot of us women, we want to be this, that, and the other. Plus we want some man that's super rich and this, that, and, 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 and also he looks like a, an Adonis and, and he's, he could put it down in the bedroom. We want all these, these things when women who are married to men who fit these certain profiles or terms of money, let's just stick with money right now. They even understand that is impossible that she not going to come first. That even her business is second to him, but all of us want to level up. We want to rise above the dust. We want to do this, that, and the other, but we don't want to accept that there are trade-offs in life. I have to accept that you have to accept that. And that's what we're hearing from this woman. And quite frankly, this is why she was chosen and why they have been married this long. I have a lot to learn from a woman like this. I'm not looking to be no high value man. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I, maybe I'll give that story one day or as to why I, I'm not really looking for a high value man, but I'm saying in terms of treating whatever man I do get with as high value. And as I'm recording this guys, I'm seeing this like blink. I have a new computer, so I don't know why that black keeps popping up, but just ignore it. You, you know, your girl is struggle streaming over here. Wife perfectly suited to the real estate magnet. A nice way to break the afternoon up and as I kind of gear into the weekend. Plus, she's also active in our business, and so we've got a couple of business things to work on. So it gives us a chance to catch up personally a little bit, but also business-wise as well. Business always. Yes. <laughs> Don Peebles works almost every day of the year. That's the price he pays for being one of the wealthiest men in the country. Sorry, guys, I got to stop it again. I just wanted to say really quickly, this is when they're talking. So that means they're not talking every day. They're not like this lunch gets them to catch up personally and business. It's a business lunch. And he's catching up with his wife during this time as well. Y'all somebody vacuuming in my house. So either my roof is crashing in. But but did you hear that? They're always business. Like she, he's not, you know, trying to massage her feelings all day or he's the, he's at home all day. And I wouldn't think you have this man making all this money. Plus he's going to be kind, caring, my best friend and all these other things. Did you hear any of that between them? These is people married 30 years, uh, a net worth of $700 million, both have a business. And, and, and this is, this is what, if you, this is what we need to study. Women need to start understanding that there are, there are trade-offs for the things that you claim that you want. And I don't think most women could hold up to that lifestyle. You would be miserable because you'd be looking for, you know, somebody to knock it out in the bedroom and you could tell all your secrets to them and y'all are just together all the time. When that is not the case. And even his wife, she's very happy in their situation. And she accepted it from day one that this is how it's going to be. But I don't think a lot of us would. But Peebles and his wife also know how to relax. They're on their way to the Hamptons, a beach resort popular with New York City's elite. Traveling in style in their Maserati, the couple arrives at their $12 million mansion. Go get something to eat. You ready? 
for lunch. Grab a bite. After you. Wherever they go, the couple has a full-time staff to assist them. What's going to happen? Okay. But despite his financial successes, Don Peebles has always been aware of his race. Um, Americans don't associate um, African Americans with wealth because they want a very simplistic answer. So um, if they see an athlete or someone who's an entertainer, they're comfortable with them being wealthy. I think it's un more unusual to see wealth um, in the business world be diverse. Nothing about me fits the stereotype of what an average American expects. But they're lazy. And so it would be better to say, oh, well, she's the blonde Barbie doll. Let's put her in this box. You know, he's, a, he's an African-American entertainer. We understand that. There have been others. So we'll put them him in that box. I don't live like the typical entertainer. I'm not, I don't live like a rapper. I don't live like a athlete. Oh, you're very good at some sports. <laughs> but, I mean, but, but I think I live in a more elegant, more established way, and it just doesn't fit. Don Peebles is part of America's top 1%. Though he tries not to flaunt his wealth, he does have one guilty pleasure. Cars. I didn't get a Ferrari until I was, you know, in my 30s because I felt that the car portrayed an image of a less serious person. And, uh, and unfortunately, so being young, and of course being a minority, um, in addition to that, made me much more conscious about how people would judge me. I got to a certain point, I really wanted comfort, so I started buying Aston Martins. I was always kind of like uncomfortable, say, with getting a Rolls Royce, which was always the most comfortable of all the cars. So um, I'd met the president of Rolls Royce at a dinner, he let me borrow a Phantom. So ultimately, I bought a Phantom convertible. So it's meant to be to get in kind of gracefully, and especially if someone's wearing a gown or something like that. OK, guys, I'm going to stop it right there. And I'll make sure I'll leave the link to this below. But I think I may, I want to do a live about this, because I think this, this entire documentary would make, <laughs> this entire documentary would make a good subject for a live discussion for us to dis discuss different parts of it. But it's what I want you to take note of as well is, listen, uh, you know, he didn't want to be flashy, okay? And it wasn't until I think he got into, I think he his late 30s, going to his 40s, that he actually started to buy things that were a little bit more flashy in terms of cars. But if you see how he's dressed, I'm sure his watch is out of this world. I don't know what those wa that watch is and things like that. But you can see they aren't just throwing money and cash and, and, and trying to flex like so many people do. There is a, that that is not upper class being, being upper class or high value, just having cash on hand and flexing. So I thought it was important to see this because you can see inner character come out in people like this. And you can see that it is, it is completely different than what is normal or what showcase. They don't show us this on the media. They only show us the entertaining part, the part of us running around, acting ratchet and doing whatever. They don't show, you know, I lived in New York, so I, I was exposed to things like this. And so, you know, and even growing up in D.C., but I think it's, um, yeah, I just thought it was eye opening. So anyway, guys, I'm rambling. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.